right, Gemini, it's me, Stormy, and here's your horoscope for March 2018. So before we jump in, Astrology 102, the reformatted class and discounted for this session is up. It's available. We are going to kick off here in April, so make sure you get signed up. And of course, I would love to see you in $3 Thursday, where this month we are going to talk about retrograde planets. So everything's in the description box down below, or you can come visit me at stormygrace.com. All right, Gemini, so it's certainly going to be... Um, an interesting month. We've got both Jupiter, who's our biggest benefic planet, bringing opportunities, bringing wisdom, bringing all of these things, bringing great benefits to the table. He's going retrograde, and he's going to be retrograde all the way until July. As well, we've got your ruling planet Mercury taking a retrograde on the 22nd. Now, one of the things that we know, first of all, with any retrograde is that we're going to look back. Things will be delayed because the forward energy is not there. The energy of going forward is actually forward backwards. <laughs> so it means looking into the past or reevaluating where we're, we are at currently. So with Jupiter, this retrograde for you is going to be in your sixth house. You could be re-looking over things with work, maybe making some kind of shift with things that are in your work or in your health, especially your mental life. And one of the things I think that Jupiter... Um, helps us do here if you use your retrograde well which means point your energy backwards is that it helps you also look at your mental health your thinking your daily routine your patterns what is your work pattern been gemini god knows you get bored really easy and you have ten thousand jobs and things like that so what is your pattern been and where can you find a little bit more fulfillment and opportunity to do something different there if you do need to relook over your health this is also a wonderful energy there with mercury retrograde we're going to be re-looking at communication. We're going to be re-looking at your thinking, how you're speaking. Um, your mental life is certainly going to come into question. And this is all going to be surrounded around your friendship zone. Who are you connecting with? Who are you talking with? Um, are you studying something online? What are your new long-range goals, right? Like, what has your long-range plan been? And any place that you go that you are part of a membership or you have a crew or a group, you're going to be re-looking at, re-communicating with, maybe even going over things from the past. A friend could come back from the past. A romance could come back from the past. Mercury retrograde is synonymous with all of those things. Now, other things we've got going on this month is we've got three moons happening, only two of which are going to be full moons. I made a mistake in the weekly and said, we're having three full moons. And you guys are like, what? And I'm like, oh, no. So only two full moons, but three moons happening this month. So it's a very changeable month is what we know. So let's jump in and talk through this month. Right here at the very beginning of the month, we've got a full moon happening at 11 degrees of Virgo. This for you is going to be happening in the fourth house. So we know the full moon says something has to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. A shift is going to come and it will precipitate an immediate start to something new. Immediate ending or culmination, immediate beginning. So in your fourth house, things are happening. You could have someone moving into your house. You could have someone moving out of your house. You yourself could be moving, things like that. Home, family, real estate, property, something could be happening to your family, a family member, something like that that brings a bit of an emotional toll to it. The other thing that I think very strongly for, for you Geminis is that it was a very interesting, changing, perspective widening year for you, I think last year coming into this year. So it could be that your emotional structures, your home, right? Your new foundation could be different and you're preparing to really look at that and to watch these last little pieces shift because you simply can't keep on living as the Gemini that you were. You've got to come forward with a new foundation to support the life that you're on. So that could be the shift that's certainly happening there as well. But I always think it's important pay attention to family and parental figures whenever we're having a moon happening anywhere near your fourth house. Now, on the 6th, we've got both Mercury and Venus here in Aries, along with Uranus. So new friends. This is the 11th house space for you. New friends, new long-range goals, new memberships, maybe refreshed connections with people. Venus is going to make you smooth like butter, right? So people are willing to accept you. You're feeling good about them. Everything you're saying is coming out warm. It's being received well. Mercury is also helping communication. And Uranus is saying, mm, 
well, let's, let's do this differently. Or even within your current friend zone or your current learning zone, because this could very much so involve your interaction with technology. It may be saying, mm, let's just refresh this a little bit. We've got to come at these friends, these groups, these people a little bit differently. So don't be afraid to take an online learning class. I will tell you, if you're going to get enrolled, if you're going to try and do it, really try and do it in the first three weeks before your ruling planet goes retrograde. Now, on the 8th, we've got Jupiter taking a retrograde in Scorpio all the way until July. Like I said, this is going to be happening in your sixth house. Where I think this turns out to be important for you to to look at is what do you value? What wisdom can you bring to this job space, routine space, um, health space, right? In your work life, in your service life, how much are you being of service? How much downtime do you actually have to think and enjoy your life? I think that's an important question in this routine as well. Now on the 14th, Jupiter, who's over here in your sixth house, is going to come into a semi-square with Saturn who's over here in the eighth house. I feel like this is an important aspect to talk about because what it tells us is that in your daily routine, in whatever's changing in this sixth house space for you, you've got to restructure in order to take advantage of it in this eighth house space, right? Maybe you've got new people in your house and now they have to be added to your taxes for the year over here in the eighth house. Maybe you've got to restructure that to participate in the intimacy of your household and your world. Whatever it is, this aspect says very specifically, you must restructure in order to take advantage of the opportunity and the opportunity is there, okay? On the 17th, we've got a new moon happening in Pisces. This is at 26 degrees um, up there with the sun and Neptune in your 10th house. At the same time, the same day, we've got Mars moving into Capricorn, joining both Pluto and Saturn. So one of the things we know is that you've got a career opportunity here and Mars being in Capricorn here in the eighth house makes things quick you can handle things you bring some action you bring some energy you bring some movement to joint resource things taxes insurance um, studying something metaphysically um, a joint resource with maybe a work thing or a, a calling thing right because this new moon happening in Pisces is gonna be your new beginning you plant these seeds of intention where do you want to start in your career or so level calling, right? Because Gemini, for some of you, you know, you did one thing, you stayed at home for most of your life or you worked most of your life and you may be flipped into different position. Maybe it's time to work. Maybe it's time to stay at home. Whatever it is, your pace has been adjusted. And Mars is going to help you make some changes that can be a little bit more effective, I think, in helping you make that adjustment, okay? Now on the 20th, we've got the sun coming into Aries, into the 11th house, so bringing more light, heat, and vitality to this space. And we're also going to be celebrating the astrological new year, so happy new year in advance. We'll be starting over right here at Aries. On the 22nd, your ruling planet Mercury is going to take this retrograde. In the 11th house, you will be looking over friends, groups, all of these things, your connections to them, maybe people you hear from the past, but whatever it is, your communication will be different and you will be re-looking at how you're participating in that. On the 31st, we've got a full moon happening in Libra. This is in your fifth house. Now, so for some of you, one of the things that I definitely keep thinking is with this full moon here, if you haven't really been enjoying yourself, if you haven't really been speaking up, you don't have a lot of fun in your life, this could be a time where the moon says, we've got to adjust this. You actually have to be able to enjoy this, right? So that's one thing that I think could be important. The other that comes immediately to my mind, Gemini, is if you have children in your world, first of all, this full moon could be trying to produce some harmony. It's in Libra, so it's partnership. It really does want harmony, but the children, childlike figure, whatever that looks like in your world, there could be a little bit of tension. Maybe they just think they know everything, okay? Um, and you're like, you don't know everything in this house, okay? <laughs> so you could see a little bit of tension there, but ultimately I think the moon is working to try and harmonize. So one of the other things I'm kind of thinking is in terms of romance, this could make things a little bit challenging to navigate if you're dating someone new. Some things could come up or you may feel a shift or maybe if you guys feel like that your road is not one that is aligning, you may choose to take a separation or a full breakup here. That's certainly something that could happen. 
But the other thing that I'm kind of thinking about is that it maybe just gives you just enough of a shakeup where it's like, okay, I could ride the wave with this person or you're ready to let it go. This could also be because it's in the fifth house, a time where if you've been working on a creative project, you've had a new business idea or something new that you've wanted to start or some kind of very creative event or endeavor, you could choose to put it down and walk away from it. So. Be mindful of where you find your value. Be mindful of where you're really feeling called to go this month because it's certainly a month of challenging your thinking, but I think it really walks you there very, very nicely. So I look forward to seeing what you do, what you create, what shifts for you this month. Please leave me in the comments down below what's happening with you. I do read them. I try and respond to as many as I absolutely can, but I love connecting with you guys. So I look forward to seeing you in class. $3 Thursdays, and I love you guys, and I will see you next month.